I'm in the process of building a 32-bit floating point multiplier in Excel VBA. So we have the multiplier here, so let's talk through it. You can put one number in here, so we put a decimal number, so let's stick with the numbers that we've worked with so far. So that's minus 0.7. So we, when we put minus 0.7 in here, it converts it automatically to the 32-bit floating point binary number we see here. And it also gives us this 32-bit number in hex here. And we can put our second number in here, 492.75. And again, it converts this number, and this is the converted number up here. It also takes that converted number, and it gives us it in hex. And this is hex here. And then does the multiplication. And when the multiplication is done, we have the 32-bit number up here, which is our floating point number, and then we can convert that back to decimal to check the answer, and we get this answer here. And each time it tells us what the number types are, so this is a normal number, that's a normal number, and the answer is a normal number. Now don't be fooled, I haven't um, cut corners and say for example just multiplied these numbers together got the decimal and then converted it back to the floating, floating point number. I have actually went through the full multiplication. So let me show you what I mean by this. If I close this down just now, and you can see that you've got this screen here. Now, in this screen, we said that whenever we multiplied the two numbers, we had to multiply the mantissa and we had to add the exponent. So this here is the multiplication of the Mantisa, and this is what we've seen whenever we looked at multiplying the two numbers together. And you can see that along the top here we have one of the numbers here, so this is the 23 bits that starts from here all the way along, and the other number is the 23 bits from here that runs all the way along here. And there's a couple, let's say AR, there's a couple off the end here you can't quite see, but we don't need to see them for the moment. And we said that if these numbers are the normal numbers, then we bit extend them by that value of 1. So this is the bit, the bit extension that we talked about. And then what we have to do is multiply these two numbers together. And this is the multiplication process, as we've seen. And you can compare that to the previous videos when we... Uh, looked at multiplying these and I wrote them all out by hand. So I've built an algorithm here in effect that does that automatically for us and we can see it changing in front of us as we change the numbers. And I've highlighted the ones as well just so you can see the changes occurring whenever we start working through and I'll show you that just in a minute. But what we do is we do the multiplication and then we add the columns and that's us added all the columns. And we've seen that we had to then uh, normalize the result. So the full the uh, full stop or the, the decimal point is at this point here. So in this instance, we would have to move the point one to the left to get the highest value of one. And the 23 bits from here, counting 23 bits, would be our mantisa. And we said that in order to get the exponent, we added the exponents together, but we also had to change the value of the exponent as well, dependent on whether we had to shift the, this decimal point one place or not. And that's the what we see here. So in these two numbers, we've got the, uh, the exponent starts off at 135 and 126, and we take away 127 to get the bias. Then we add it on, and we get the value of 7. And we also have to add on that value, which is the shift here. So that gives a value of 8. So that's going to be, in effect, 2 to the power of 8 times. And it would be the mantissa you have here. So that would be 1 upon 2, 1 upon 8, 1 upon 16, so on and so forth. So the actual code here allows you to look and see what happens whenever you the program allows you to see what happens whenever we actually get in and run 
and change it. So let's say we'll get in here again and I'll I'll run this again for us. Okay, so that's it sitting here. And you can see that as we change these numbers, you'll see that the numbers here change above. So you see all the ones shifting about from one position to another position. Okay. So you can use this in order to try and work out exactly what's happening whenever you multiply different number types together. So for example, at the moment I've got it working for multiplying a normal number with a normal number and getting a normal result, or a normal number with a subnormal number and getting a normal result. But it still doesn't work quite right whenever I multiply uh, numbers together and get a subnormal result. It's slightly out. So I'm just sitting through that today and trying to get that fixed. So that's where I am at the moment. As soon as this is fixed, I'll get a, another video on showing the finished article. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye. One other thing to note is that the audio in this video and the previous video, I don't think they're very good. Uh, I've got a new headphones here and because uh, the last one stopped working, uh, but the, I can't seem to get the volume quite right in them. I have ordered another set, so the volume and uh, the audio should be better in the next video.